this is the cluster power supply in which there are various knobs there first is the uh, that am and fm knob is there so for the experiment we have to set the am okay and if we are set, set the am signal then we can change the frequency from these two nerves if i am changing here so the amplitude is going to change as we have seen in the cro by changing this the amplitude of the wave is changing and when i am changing this knob the frequency of the input signal is changing this is the beam voltage for the experiment we have to set the beam voltage uh, more than 200 volt and this is the now for the repeller voltage and for this experiment we have to set repeller voltage approximately 100 so from this now we can check here i used 205 volt beam voltage and the repeller voltage is approximately 100 volt and the signal is coming from here to this cable to the claystone power supply so this is the claystone which is generating the rf signal as we have seen that from this it, the am signal is coming and the frequency of the am signal is in terms of kilohertz okay but we need the rf signal so we we are giving this signal to the claystone power supply and it will generate the rf signal after that isolator is there the function of the isolator is just use it will uh, pass the signal in a, this direction if suppose any signal is coming from back it will isolate from that power supply okay after that this is the frequency meter it is used to calculate the frequency and the working principle of uh, this frequency meter is just like a cavity resonator it is the cavity resonator if i am tuning this uh, complete setup then it, it can absorb complete rf signal after that variable attenuator is there the function of the variable atten attenuator is to control the rf signal suppose right now it is completely open but if i am moving this in a clockwise direction the, uh, the the intensity of the signal is can be controlled from this uh, attenuator and this is the slider okay so by changing this sliding terminal we can change the maxima and minima of the whatever wave is reflected so th through this we can calculate the maxima and minima here i put it the short circuit so by using short circuit whatever wave is coming it is going to reflect back in a 180 degree phase shift okay so first what we have to do we have to calculate the resonance uh, sorry lem uh, guided frequency whatever signal is coming in this waveguide so first we will calculate the guided frequency so by using this we have to rotate this frequency meter as in the CRO we have seen that some signal is coming at the output terminal we are taking this output from this cable in the CRO and by changing this frequency as we have seen that the intensity or amplitude of the output signal is changing so if I am moving this frequency meter as we have seen that the output is almost constant right now look as in the CRO the output is completely zero means whatever signal is coming at the input side this frequency meter is absor absorbing all the power that's why we are not getting any signal at the output terminal now what is the next objective the next ob objective is to calculate the frequency so here there is one red line is there and there is one black slot is there and as we have seen that this red line is intersecting on between the 8.58 not 8 uh, 9.54 to 9.58 so in the middle we can consider it is the 9.55 okay now
almost zero. So, so the guided frequency is almost 9.5. Okay, you can take 9.5 or you can take 9.55. Next, we have to calculate the minima. So before that, we have to detune this uh, frequency meter. Why? Because in this time, whatever signal is coming, it is all the power is absorbing by this frequency meter. So for that, we have to detune. So you just noted in some value. When we are doing the detune, then some signal is coming at the CRO. Now here in the sliding terminal, first we have to check the minima. We are checking only the minima because in the minima we are getting the zero. If we are calculating the maximum, then it is very difficult to calculate. So minima for uh, for the calculation purpose, we are using the uh, we are calculating the minima. Okay. So I am just putting sliding at completely at the load terminal and when I am moving this see the output is almost zero so we will calculate the position of this minima here here this zero line here we can see that this zero line is coincide with 8.1 centimeter this is the 8.1 centimeter and in between this there is another line which is called coincidence with that is the six line so the first minima is 8.16 the first is 8.1 is the zero line and the uh, second decimal is the uh, another line so this is the 8.16 now again i am changing position of this sliding and we have seen that in the CRO the output is increasing Here the output is almost zero. And then again we will calculate the second minima position. So that is the 10.2. Okay, this is the 10.2, and the another line is co coincidence with 10.9. Okay, so this is the 10.29. So the second minima is 10.29 centimeter okay so that the difference between these two minima we can calculate d1 minus d2 so that is the lambda g y 2 so the lambda g is equal to 2 d1 minus d2 okay so from this from this lambda g we can calculate 1 upon lambda square equal to 1 upon lambda naught square uh, lambda c square plus 1 upon lambda g square so this is the free space impedance this is the cutoff frequency and this we can calculate the it is the two way where a is the cross sectional area of the waveguide okay so this is the waveguide for the x band so the dimension is already there in the literature okay lambda g we have calculated from this okay so by using this formula we can calculate the free space frequency free space frequency okay so and the next objective is to calculate the VSWR. Now in order to calculate the VSWR, I just connected this uh, output probe to the VSWR meter and uh, I just replaced the short circuit into the termination and and from the slotted section, first uh, before that uh, we have uh, selected the VSWR is just like that it should be the one and when we are moving this uh, slotted section the at, we have seen that in the VSWR meter the meter is going in the up position okay so when I am moving right now the meter is reached in the maximum position and again when I am moving it is going back so that position is called the VSWR of the standing wave whatever it generated okay so in the VSWR meter we can take the reading
okay we are going to perform the experiment for the vi characteristic of uh, gun diode so basically gun diode was proposed by jb gun in 1962 and this is the gun diode symbol and it gives the negative resistance and it is made up of gallium arsenide material and it is based on the n layers so here is the complete layer of the gun diode so at the below we can see heat sink and top side it's a metallic contact and in between three layers are there which is made up of a uh, n-type semiconductor but top side and bottom side it is a highly doped uh, n-type semiconductor and in between it is a moderately doped n-type semiconductor so this is the vi characteristic of the gun diode so x axis it is representing the voltage and in y axis it is representing the current in this curve we can see when we are increasing the voltage so current is also increasing simultaneously and after reaching at the peak voltage current is going to decrease and up to the certain amount of the voltage level the current will continuously it will be decreasing and after certain amount of the voltage at the valley point it will uh, start increasing the current so we can come to this here so this is the gun power supply this is the gun power supply and here is the gun bias knob so we can increase the voltage level from here and just we are we want to show that uh, this is the cable and gun diode is connected over here in this waveguide okay previously here classroom oscillator was connected and right now we have replaced with a gun diode so right now i am going to increase the voltage level So I am increasing the voltage level over here and here it is showing the current in milli ampere. <coughs> so we have to operate the system very slowly. So just you can see here at around 4.5 or 4.6 voltage current started decreasing continuously it is decreasing So again we can see here around 5.5 5.5 volt current again increased up to two, uh, 225 milli ampere so it can be concluded through this experiment that uh, at the peak point uh, here, it, here the voltage was coming around 4.5 volt when the peak current was 270 milli ampere and after 4.5 volt current started decreasing and around 5.5 volt again current started increasing from 90, uh, 90 milli ampere around.